want to uh, thank you all for coming this morning. Um, we're here specifically as a Senate majority to discuss our aggressive plan for addressing the issues associated with Senate Bill 91. Um, I'm going to have an opening statement. It's a little longer than usual. I'm going to hand off to Senator Coghill. He's got some statements, and then we'll go to questions. But we have majority members standing behind us in support of the work that we will describe in this press conference. Um, first, I want to say that the Senate majority is committed to improving public safety through the evaluation, continuous monitoring, and revisions to Alaska's current criminal justice statutes, including improvements to Senate Bill 91 that was signed into law last session. Our first prior priority is that we live up to the requirements of the Constitution, specifically in this case, as set out in Article 1, Section 12. And I'm going to quote that. They shall be based upon the following, the need for protecting the public, community condemnation of the offender, the rights of victims of crimes, restitution from the offender, and the principle of reformation. Our efforts in Senate Bill 91 were not about reducing cost. They were about improving a status quo, crim quo criminal system that has experienced an increase of crime in our state since 2012, long before the birth of Senate Bill 91, and dire directly related to the opioid and heroin epidemic that has plagued not only our state, but all other 49 states. And I'm, I'm not going to hold up a bunch of charts right now, but you, you know what the curves look like. In last year, heroin deaths surpassed gun homicides for the first time throughout the U.S. Um, what we were doing previously was clearly not working. So in the legislature's efforts to improve the system, we passed a significant piece of legislation in Senate Bill 91 that we now realize requires some adjustment. We have heard the people of Alaska. We know that you are frustrated, and we understand and share that frustration. Our primary objective is not to rest until we made the necessary adjustments so that Alaskans of every demographic feel safe in their homes and know that perpetrators will absolutely be held accountable for their actions and offenses. The goal of Senate Bill 91 is to reduce crime and have a better outcome for those that have a high probability of productive reformation. However, the rights and public safety of the law abiding must always come first. Since the passage of Senate Bill 91, we have met with many individuals and groups either adversely affected or overwhelmed by the increase of crime in our state. We've met with individual victims of crime, victims advocate groups, state municipal law enforcement, the Criminal Justice Commission, the Department of Law and the Courts to understand where Senate Bill 91 and our criminal justice statutes need further improvement and other factors that will reduce crime in Alaska. We will ensure that the Department of Public Safety and Law have the tools they need to take people off the streets that are unwilling to follow our laws and processes to keep them there whenever public safety is at risk. Before I hand off to Senator Coghill, I want to reiterate that we are listening, we are committed to working hard on and continuing to monitor this issue until all Alaskans once again feel safe in their homes and that their property they work so hard to obtain is protected. We have standing behind me senators from the Senate majority that are in support of our efforts and at this time, I'm going to hand it up to Senator Coghill. Thank you, Senator Michigi. And, uh, and I, I couldn't have said it any better. Uh, certainly, Senate Bill 91 was uh, broad in its scope and it dealt with everything from how police act to the judicial system to the, the corrections, victim advocates uh, and their needs, victims' needs, and uh, uh, how we deal with some of the programs in Alaska. What we're trying to do is say, the best way to hold people accountable isn't always just sitting in jail. But what we found out through the implementation process is that there are some tools that the police felt like just weren't getting the accountability measures uh, incentive enough to be in place. And uh, so we, we kind of have seen three areas percolate to the top that will uh, improve the public safety, give the police some of the tools that they needed, and actually get those programs uh, moving into the right direction. So the three areas that we dealt with uh, that we'll be dealing with uh, were recommended actually by the Criminal Justice Commission. So the reason the press conference today is the commission gave us a report, it was read across uh, the uh, uh, record today. We began looking in the Judiciary Committee at those recommendations. There were a, a number of recommendations, some very technical in nature, uh, some very specific uh, that were 
uh, probably not real problematic. But three areas came to the surface that became very, very clear. And they're no surprise to us because throughout the summer we've heard from the police, from victims advocates groups, uh, from people who are just getting tired of uh, being stolen from. While we have an a, a epidemic of uh, drug use, uh, heroin probably being the worst, uh, moving through our society, the tools to hold people accountable, uh, I think the police has felt like we could do better. So the three areas that have surfaced up as the big policy calls are uh, in the C felony area, having the ability to have jail time hang over people uh, and actually take them off the streets. Uh, and there's violent and nonviolent uh, C felonies that were debated in the commission. And we'll see how they fall out into the legislative process. Uh, but I think giving the tool under those C felonies to actually get somebody before a judge, hold them accountable, and get that program uh, in place, and actually hold people accountable for the behavior that they're there for. Uh, that, was, uh, that was something that could have been done better. I think there were some tools in place already, but it became apparent that the police uh, just languished on that tool. Then the other thing is, petty theft is such a big, big deal in Alaska that uh, the escalation of misdemeanors uh, became apparently a problem. And that is, if you are stealing once, it's not the same thing as if you stole twice and were picked up by the police. They had to have an escalating penalty. And so you'll see that uh, at the lowest levels of misdemeanors, we're going to begin to debate on how do we escalate those to properly hold people accountable and get them uh, the uh, accountability measures and have the public safer. Probably the other area that is the big one of the big three was the violations of conditions of release. Allowing a misdemeanor to be applied there under that violation gets them before a judge and then the underlying uh, charge then becomes a bigger deal. And I think what they're saying is the incentive to uh, be held accountable uh, in a drug or rehab program just languished there. So those three tools are probably the biggest three items that we've had. So what we did in the Judiciary Committee is we began to have the Commission roll these out to us. And uh, today we're going to have uh, uh, the Department of Law, uh, we're going to have the Attorney General, we're going to have the Department of Corrections still deal with some of the implementation issues. But what we found out also during this summer, during the implementation stage, we're dealing with a broad scope of issues. For example, the courts change their bail, their bail, bail schedule simultaneously to the implementation of Senate Bill 91, which created some of those accountability tools to be uh, less uh, forceful. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> the budget, being what it is, uh, less prosecuting time, less police time. Uh, you add all those up and the tools just need to be refined. And so I think this improvement uh, proposed by the uh, commission and brought to us by the police and for those who are just getting tired of being violated uh, are totally appropriate. And so uh, we're working on them in judiciary. You'll see bills kind of rolled out as we get them drafted over the next week or so. Thank you, Senator. Um, we're ready for questions. If there are members of the press that would like to ask questions, we have one online, but uh, we'll start in the room. Becky. Becky Moore with the Associated Press. Uh, Senator Coghill, to be clear on the Class C felony, the, the commission talked about recommending that those carry a presumptive jail term of zero to 90 days for first time offenders. Is that what you were talking with, about with that? Yes. And then the whole, they have about 10 pages. You mentioned the three areas with the intent to focus on those. Uh, what about these other recommendations? A good point, Becky. Uh, there were 14 recommendations. Uh, the 14th recommendation was purely technical, and I think you'll see us just put out a technical bill, and that is if it's mentioned in one place in statute uh, and not in the other, that we repair that. So uh, my intention is to roll out a uh, judiciary bill that is just a technical. And I think we'll deal with that first because we need to show very clearly that that is, in fact, what's happening is like a revisor's bill, just technical. Then we have the 13 issues that are policy calls. Some of them are uh, more important than others, but I'll give you an example of one that's important, but it needs to be changed in law. Victim notification. We required that they notify victims. There are some victims that don't want to be notified. There are some victims that can't be notified. So the requirement uh, put uh, resources in places where 
it, it just wasn't working well. So practically speaking, we had to give them a flexibility point. So even though that's not a major policy call, it's still an important factor for the uh, judicial system. So we had, uh, of those 13 though, the three that really raised to the public safety question, or the three that I just mentioned. And that is, uh, there, uh, you have to remember, the police get a phone call, you get somebody who, uh, we, they don't know what the circumstance is, uh, but they have to go and respond. And we want to have them have the tools to get somebody out of a situation, hold them accountable, get them before a judge. Uh, and certainly people are innocent until they're proven guilty, but it's also true that public safety, uh, if, you, if you arrest them and they're out the same night, the police just struggled with that, and I get that. And I think that was unfortunate, the timing of the uh, bail schedule, uh, the inability uh, of resources, and then this tool to not get them in front of a judge. So I think that was an important uh, thing that was told us. It's not evidence-based, as the commission said, but it was definitely uh, coming from the public and from the police, and it needs to be acknowledged. And Senator, I just want to dovetail on that is that it also um, fits into the recommendations of the Departments of Law and Public Safety from the January 9th letter that some of you may have received. Um, clearly, um, when it comes to law enforcement and the Department of Law, they feel like those are tools that they needed to uh, better uh, supplement public safety efforts in our communities. Yes. yes. Also, on the, on the yes. specifics of the, of the bill, I won't comment right now. But I think you had wondered, I think in your question, you were wondering, what about the other measures? And the fact is, is that they'll all be dealt with. Uh, but it was important, we thought, maybe to move them in separate bills so that, the, that they didn't go glacially slow. Uh, some of these things can be handled rather quickly. We don't want to attach them to a bill that has larger policy implications that might just slow it down. So we want to make sure the, the, uh, the, the uh, issues with the most substance uh, move as quickly as they can. And the, uh, and the ones with, say, less substance and are more technical, uh, they, they, we don't want to get them um, dragged into the larger policy question. Liz? My question was along those lines, just as far as the format that we could see um, these recommendations move forward in the Senate. Um, you mentioned that they are a priority for the Senate. Uh, what about uh, working with the other body? Um, is there a commitment from them also to make these recommendations a priority this year? So I've talked with the Judiciary Chairman, uh, Matt Clayman, uh, Representative Clayman, and uh, the answer is yes, uh, but they want us to take the lead. Uh, and so uh, I think you'll see a pretty good working relationship there. But we're, uh, like we did in putting Senate Bill 91 together, it's going to be a very uh, broad collaborative effort. And so uh, I think you're going to see a pretty good working relationship there. Uh, this is uh, public safety everybody's interested in. Um, and we just have to get it right. And so we're just doing the best we can to make sure that the public is safe. I think that's uh, their target as well. Other questions? Steve. Yeah, I've read some accounts where uh, some police departments were kind of blaming SB 91 for some of what was going wrong, whether it was the crime rate or not. Are these fair criticisms or is it just convenient? Well, yeah. I'll start on that. I, you know, a lot of it, there are issues that we clearly, policy issues that we want to improve in Senate Bill 91. However, here's a few crime facts from prior to the passage or even creation of Senate Bill 91. The rate of violent crime has increased significantly. Between 2014 and 15, the rate increased by 14.9 percent from 635 per 100,000 to 730 per 100,000 residents. We have seen an increase in crime since around 2012. We know that it's associated with drug-related activity in our state. There's somewhat of a misunderstanding. What we never removed was the tool for a police officer, a law enforcement officer in this state to arrest someone when there was a public safety risk in this state. True. But some of the... Um, confusion and I'll just I'll point out an article from that from KSRM today and it talks about a woman that was taken to Wildwood pretrial she faced three misdemeanor charges for theft criminal trespass and drug possession um, she was later released on her own recognizance on misdemeanor charges the woman was able to sign herself almost immediately out of jail the chief was frustrated and commented as such in this 
story, but it goes on to say, and this is the truth, but the reality is that the woman could have and should have been held. She does have a criminal record and was currently out on conditions release on a felony theft. So there's some misunderstanding, and that's part of our effort. When we close this meeting, we're going to talk about some of the ways that our outreach is going to increase as we work on these priority issues and then go to the second tier of recommendations. So uh, I'll answer it in three ways. Uh, uh, the, the first one is uh, we obviously stated that we want them to have the tools to keep the safe public safe. There has uh, been some confusion. As I said, the court changed some of the ways they're doing it. The Department of Law changed the way that they were prosecuting. And so you had that mix in there. So it was easy to say the new law had made it difficult. But I will say this. If there's police out there deliberately misinforming the public about uh, what we're doing in the legislature, uh, I would be highly disappointed. And so, uh, uh, and I've heard some of that anecdotally, but I haven't seen it specifically. But uh, that would be really unfortunate. We're trying to get them the tools so that they can keep the public safe. Other questions? We have Matt Buxton um, with Fairbanks Daily News Minor. Matt, are you there? Do you have a question? Uh, yes, thanks. Um, yeah, so. Um, one of the things from the news conference yesterday um, was this, you know, that these recommendations are not uh, evidence-based, and that was really the big kind of driver, right, on SB91, that everything was data-driven, evidence-based. How do you kind of weigh these new changes uh, against those sort of principles of that legislation? Thanks, Matt. Uh, that is true, and that was actually very emphatically stated by the commission. Uh, however... Uh, public safety, community condemnation, and the police input uh, are also uh, parts of what we asked the commission to look at. And uh, when they brought these in, even though they're not necessarily evidence-based, uh, the police were bringing us evidence that they just do not have the tools. And so I think what, we're, what we'll debate is, uh, are these tools that recommended by the commission going to be effective? And we'll just have to ask them at the ground level, how is it going to work? So public condemnation and public safety uh, still being paramount, uh, I think uh, that is going to open up for a debate. The good news is, of the 21 or more areas in Senate Bill 91, we've really narrowed it down to three major problems. And I think uh, public safety can be enhanced and improved through these uh, efforts. So I think the Commission made that very clear that public safety was the, one of the driving forces. Yes, Becky. Senator Coghill, do you know the timing on a bill, if there's another bill that's kind of complex to give people enough time to review that? Sure. Uh, drafting time is going to be uh, uh, tough for us. We just got the recommendations Monday, uh, and we pushed the commission for those recommendations because we'd been hearing the same things that they'd been hearing, and we were hungry for their deliberation so that we could get into our deliberation. Uh, I expect to see a technical bill come out first so that we can show, in fact, they are technical. And then we're going to go into the policy calls. And as you heard the president say, the question is, should they be uh, uh, divided into three, the big three, and then the other, uh, you know, seven? Um, I'm open to discussion on that. That has not been settled yet. Additional questions? Um, Seeing none, I'm going to put out a request to the media, and that is uh, we are asking the media to provide the email, the following email address to the public, and that is Senate Majority at aKLEG.gov. And the reason for that is we want to hear from Alaskans on the common themes um, that they see as being an issue. And we're going to respond um, via Facebook, some individually. We want to share responses with those common themes with all Alaskans. We, we hope to use this process to understand the gaps and any outstanding misperceptions or misconceptions about the bill, but especially to make ourselves available to hear your concerns and, and respond through better policy where it's appropriate and constructive. We are asking the public to engage. We're listening and invite you to engage. Some of the things we want to hear when you're told by an official that they cannot respond effectively 
We want to know about that. We want to be able to help not only answer your questions, but perhaps engage with the departments that may have some confusion about some of the aspects about the bill. We are listening. We're engaged. We are not going to rest until Alaskans feel that they're safe, that law enforcement is equipped to respond effectively, and the Department of Law has the tools necessary to keep unrepentant offenders off the streets. We're absolutely committed to um, improving the effects of Senate Bill 91 for a better public safety outcome. So we want to thank you for coming. Um, we hope uh, we provided some information to follow us through this process, and uh, we look forward to hearing from Alaskans about criminal justice in Alaska. So thank you. Thank you.